What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be checking out four different photograph based techniques uh, for integrating these photographs uh, in your UI design. And when I say integrating, I mean making them a large part of your UI design. It could, do, could be just like the section, like a hero section of your UI design or just another section somewhere uh, like in the landing page. And so these four techniques, uh, I'm naming them. First is the watermark. We're all pretty much familiar with a watermark photograph. I'll show you that. And then also we have what I call the fade technique also the unicorn photograph, and then finally a flat photograph. So I'm gonna show you how to work with all four of these. As always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now wait one second, I'm about to give you some education in UI design and photography, but if you're not very good at UI design in general, definitely check out my UI design bootcamp at scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So I really can't stress this enough. If you're not very good with UI design and you really want to level up your skill in a relatively short amount of time, definitely check out my course. Click on the top link here in the YouTube description, and then you will be able to gain access to my bootcamp along with many, many other courses. All right, so here I have in Figma a empty frame, just a desktop version, and let's get started. So let's say we want to work with um, I, a, a snake photograph. This is a site about snakes or something. So I can right click, come over here. I'm gonna use Unsplash for this. It's a free plugin um, and you guys can install that however you wish. And let's go to search and I'm just going to type in snake. So our first type of photo or technique rather is going to be the watermark technique. And this one that is the most common. So let me show you what I mean. So we type in snake here. Um, I wish I could make this larger, but um, this would be fine as is. So we're just gonna find, you don't really have to be very discerning at all in terms of the type of photograph that you're looking for. I, and therefore it, it is the most flexible um, method. You can pretty much use any type of photograph, no matter how much contrast and brightness um, or darkness is found within it. Um, and it really just allows us to, like, like let's choose um, this one right here. This is a reticulated python, by the way, which I do have. That's my 17 foot monster. Um, and so let's go ahead and just take this and get it sized up to, to however you know you want. Now, obviously putting text right on top of this simply would not work. So let me just give an example. So I'm gonna put in witness monster snakes. Of course, it's extremely small, we can't see it, but let's boost that up quite a bit. Um, and seems like this is kind of like a darker image. So maybe, I mean, this is gonna be the best contrast we can get. Perhaps we can switch to Poppins and make it quite bold to make it a little bit easier. But again, as you can see, it's uh, pretty much impossible uh, to read it. So this is a major accessibility issue uh, because there's a lack of contrast. So the watermark method here is, uh, quite simple. All we have to do is add a, we select the image, we add a fill right here, and we can make it a solid. And then we'll take it black, and then just bring down the opacity like this. So again, this is the watermark method. It is, like I said, the most simple. And it is also probably while it is the most simple and easiest way to, to, to do this sort of thing, it's also, it's, a, it's also kind of the more outdated way um, and the approach to using a, a full photograph as a part of a UI. Um, so yeah, it, it's one of those things. You can get away with it, but like I said, it's dated. Um, so the next type of method I wanna cover, let's get rid of that. Oops, no, not that, this. All right, so the next method I'll cover here is what I call the fade. All right, so let's do the fade here. So let's go to Unsplash. We'll type in snake once again. And let's just choose this one right here. All right. Now, if we were to put this in side desktop two here, and maybe we'll make it a little bit larger. 
and get that back in and then take our text over here. All right, and then also, let's see here. Um, delete that, there you go. We can see clearly, cannot see, not enough contrast. Um, maybe we can create a gradient fade on it um, so that we can situate this maybe a little bit differently. So what I mean by that is, um, what we can do is just scale this down. Let's say we'll push this text to like a right or a left column. Um, and let's, uh, let's see here. We'll scale it down a little bit more. Get this back inside. Take the background, we're gonna make it black. And it, it, there's a cutoff here. So this, this, it, this photograph is naturally a little bit darker, especially based on the patterns here. Um, and so what we can do is fade this off into the background in which it sits. So we'll take this, add a fill, leave it at linear here. And what we'll do is just move these into the appropriate position. So let's uh, get this situated right here. And then make this black. This one as well needs to be black. And there we go. So now we take our text, put it back up to the top, uh, make sure they're white. And that then what we can do is take this and let's adjust the letter or the line height rather. We'll move these both over. Just about done with this alignment here. We'll left align this type. And there you go. And so that's why I call it the fade. It, it just, it, it, you're able to get the full effect, the full contrast or the originality of the photograph, um, but you're, you're also able to, to fade it in and you're able to get your type here as well. So you just have to shift over the photograph in some way um, to get this photograph to work. So, or, or the whole composition rather. Um, so the next one I'm gonna call the unicorn. <laughs> Because a unicorn in image is, I, I, is a photograph is kind of like what I consider to be um, a really just ideal slash just almost a perfect type of photograph for use in this type of context. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we'll duplicate this, we'll get rid of that and get our unsplash plugin up here. We'll type in, um, let's just do reptile this time and let's search for an image that is uh, it has a, um, a a portion of the image where there will be enough contrast naturally where we don't have to 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 man manipulate anything like we're not going to have to add a fade we're not going to have to do anything there's going to be a perfect part of the photograph that i is simple enough and will have enough contrast where we just place the, the type or whatever it is we're placing on it right there in that section. Um, this possibly could work. Notice this, this spot above the turtle. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Actually, we, let's just use that turtle photograph, um, which was right here. Okay, so we could probably push it right up around here. Now it means our layout of our type is gonna have to change to, to, to come up here and probably in a two column fashion. So let me show you what that looks like. So we'll take this, uh, extend it up, come down. All right, right there seems to be pretty good. And then we'll take our type, um, let's, Duplicate those. Witness monster turtles. Let's just make this relevant. All right, and maybe we'll scale it down a bit. Take our line height down. And then maybe we'll just do like a two column approach here. Right. Let's get rid of a little bit of type. 
witness monster turtles with over blah 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 and there we go what's really really cool about this the unicorn photograph is we don't have to adjust anything about the photograph it works well we have a focal point in the photograph and usually this is achieved by you, you know a, a photographer who's who's really focusing on a single element so the background becomes blurred and therefore allows you to quickly and easily um, just place your type um, with enough contrast naturally um, the next one I'm gonna call is just a flat photograph um, where there's a single element in focus like this turtle and then everything else is just a solid color all right um, you, you could also achieve this by just taking the the object into f to Photoshop and just cutting it out and then just placing it on it like a solid background color um, but but some photographs you don't have to do that they're already like that naturally depending on if the object was shot like uh, behind like a solid background color so let's do that real quick I'll duplicate this get rid of that alright and then we'll come over here this is one my long last final example so we'll type in snake uh, not snake I uh, this time yeah let's just type in reptile this one this is a perfect example this is a leopard gecko I have a leopard gecko I uh, and let's put this down here maybe we'll shift it to the right uh, maybe we will scale it down just a tad bit look at their tails they're so cool all right um, get this right here take our background make it the same color and sometimes this won't work uh, depending on if there's a slight very subtle gradient in the photograph your eye doesn't notice uh, in order to get good contrast make this black we'll push this eye uh, over here let's type this I uh, look at this little dude let's increase that I like that and then increase this and then we'll move this down maybe you get this position correctly over here and there we go so those are the four types of photographs and the techniques for working with photographs that you can use uh, in your UI design so first here uh, just to recap is the transparent you know the watermark not the transparent sorry the watermark uh, technique we have the fade technique and then we have the elusive uh, unicorn photograph which you know it, it could be a little bit tough finding these type but when you do I really love it just because there is already texture in the background it's already naturally a part of the photograph and it just looks really well if you find the right type of photograph and then finally just the flat technique where we have a, a single element um, and it just looks like it's a part of you know your user interface kind of already and it's just kind of there it's 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 just focused on one object all right so hopefully you learned something new about UI design and photography it's all about just finding the right photograph and also depends on you know what photographs are available for your your needs and also the type of style that you want to go with um, for me personally, I usually try to stick with either the unicorn approach or the flat approach. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.